keep seeing this bumper sticker that's popular where I live. It says, God bless America. Every time I see one, I think, God has. God has blessed America. America is around 6% of the world's population, and we consume over 40% of its resources. The point isn't, how can God bless America more? The point is, how can America bless others? In the Bible, when God blesses somebody, when God gives to them, it's so that they'll bless and give to others. There's this verse in the Bible, a letter called 1 Timothy, and it says, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant or to put their hope in wealth. Now, I always assumed this verse was for somebody else. I mean, specifically somebody rich, but, but I have a car. 8% of the people in the world have a car. 92% of people in the world would see you and I driving in our cars. And, and I don't care what kind of car you have. 92% of the people in the world would see us driving in our cars and they think, Rich, do you have access to clean drinking water? Because somewhere around a billion people in the world don't even have clean water. And so you and I, like we go to the sink, we take out a glass, we get something to drink. The hundreds of millions of people in the world would watch us doing that. And they'd probably say to themselves, man, it must be nice. Have you eaten today? Because somewhere around like 800 million people won't eat today. Like 300 million of them are kids. Like every couple seconds, somebody dies from hunger. Like how, like how much change do you have on you? like your wallet or your purse. How much money do you have on you right now? Around a billion people in the world live on less than one dollar a day. Experts say that in order to provide like water, basic health and nutrition for everyone in the world, they say it, the estimates that it would cost somewhere around 20 billion dollars, which is how much Americans spend in one year on ice cream. We are so rich. But maybe you have this sense, like you look around and you have this sense like you don't have that much because you see people who have even more. But it's a dangerous thing when we start to think that our world is the world. I mean, we're like bombarded with all these images of the newest models and the latest styles. And after a while, our stuff, it starts to seem kind of average or outdated or not good enough. But, but for the rest of the world, our, our life is the commercial. Our stuff is the catalog. We're the picture in the advertisement. W what isn't good enough for us, for the rest of the world, would be more than enough. So the verse in First Timothy, it says, command those who are rich not to put their hope in wealth. And then, and then it goes on, it continues, and it says, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. That phrase, the God who richly provides us with everything. All that we have is a gift. Food, it's a gift. Clothes, gift. Roof, gift. That breath that you just took, it's a gift. Now there are some, there are some who say, no, 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 you don't understand. I've worked for what I have. I deserve it. It's mine. But like it says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, it says, you may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God, because it's God who gives you the ability to produce wealth. So there's nothing wrong with wealth and possessions in themselves. I mean, God never condemns people simply for having things. I mean, they're, they're gifts from God. It's just that God made us for so much more than just enjoying our stuff. God gives for a reason. And so the verse, the command begins to those who are rich. It says, don't put your hope in wealth, put your hope in God. And then it continues and it, commands, it says, command them to do good to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. And when the writer uses the phrase good deeds, he's referring to this uh, ancient Hebrew concept called the mitzvot. The word mitzvot is, is actually in Hebrew language, it's the word commands. So the ancient rabbis taught 
that when we do the commands of God, when we do good deeds, we're helping to repair and restore the world. So the first Christians, they picked up on this, like in a letter called Ephesians. That one of them wrote that we're saved by the grace of God through faith in Christ in order to do mitzvot, in order to do good deeds. We're, we're saved to do good works. And so we're commanded to do mitzvot and to be generous and willing to share. And then the verse wraps up this way. It says, in this way, and, and this way is the rich, that's commanded to do mitzvot and to be generous and willing to share. And then the verse wraps up this way. It says, in this way, and, and this way is the rich, that's us, be becoming generous and willing to share. It says, in this way, they lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age. And, and in doing this, they take hold of the life that is truly life. Now, uh, when some hear the phrase laying up treasures, you know, they start to think of like money and wealth and, and mansions, but, but Jesus never even used the word mansion. I mean, nowhere in his teaching is, is it about or is the point getting more stuff. It's not the goal here on earth and it's not the goal someday in heaven for Jesus. It's about being content. It's about taking hold of the life that is truly life. It's about realizing that the kinds of people we're becoming matters. It has eternal implications. It's about our future. It's, it's about our forever. Now, if you're like me at this point, you're kind of looking for the pitch, you know? Okay, just tell me where I'm supposed to give money or who I'm supposed to give money to, and then I'll give the money, and then I'll be off the hook. But this, this is about something much, much bigger than just giving to the latest cause. This isn't some transaction, you know, where we write a check, or we put some cash in an envelope, and then we're off the hook. This, this is about how we view the world and, and how we view our stuff. This is about what you and I truly believe about what we have. I mean, do I, do I really believe that everything I have is a gift and that I have, I have this divine responsibility to give, to share, to spread it around? Do I really believe that the way we're commanded to live is the best possible way to live? Let's be honest, it's easy to go to a church service and it's easy to read the Bible and it's easy to discuss who believes what and who's right and who's wrong, it's easy. But when Jesus talks about his followers, he talks about people who are generous, people who clothe the naked and take food to the hungry, take water to the thirsty, and people who visit the prisoner, and people who invite the stranger in, people who give their time, people who give their energy, people who give their money. Jesus said the way is narrow. He even said it's difficult for the rich to enter the way of God. Putting others first, that isn't so easy. Jesus said he came to serve and serving takes, serving takes sacrifice. It costs. It's hard to ask difficult questions about how we spend our money and what we spend our money on. I mean, you and I are told every day in a thousand ways that we need bigger, better, and more, and that what we have, it isn't good enough. You know, we're told, buy this, consume that, get this, and then we'll be happy. Do you sometimes feel like you're on a treadmill and you're working harder and harder and harder and more and more and spending more and more and you're more and more stressed and less and less content? The best question isn't, what can I get? To take the way of Jesus seriously 
is to realize that the best question is what can I give? Because all of us can give something here, now, today, and then tomorrow, and then the next day. What can you do to be more generous? What is the next step for you? You have been blessed. What can you give? Who are you going to bless? So may you come to see that you're rich and that your possessions, they're luxuries that most of the people in the world don't have. And may you do what Jesus says. May you step in to your divine responsibility to give. And when you do, may you take hold of the life that is truly life.